Costa Diva. It's hard to think of a more famous soprano aria. Certainly post Maria Callas, uh, who died in 1977, in a whole new resurgence of interest in this absolutely exquisite bel canto aria by Vincenzo Bellini. Costa Diva comes from the opera Norma, which received its world premiere in 1831 at La Scala Milan. Four years later, he was dead. It was a great tragedy, a great loss to the opera world. Uh, he had a phenomenal, astonishing gift for melody. Verdi was the grand old man, but he acknowledged so much of his, uh, particularly his early works, early and middle Verdi, are very, very influenced by Bellini. You can tell that by the fact that it's very based on melody and often very simplistic accompaniment. Costa Diva does have a very simplistic accompaniment. It's in F major and the strings are arpeggiated all the way through. They're leaving the whole thing to the singer. I'm about to watch Aida Garufalina, the Russian soprano, for the first time. So this is Costa Diva and I love this aria. Well, it's the opening number in a show that I wrote about the life of Maria Callas, which was narrated by Simon Callow, who's quite famous from Four Weddings and a Funeral. Simon Callow, that's another story. Let's go. This is the AIDS Gala in Berlin, 2021. And then simple arpeggiated strings. Exposed that opening. Breath control and tuning, everything is exposed. You have to do nothing, you're a goddess. The tuning there is so clear. Seats are so perfectly, my goodness. love that last note actually just like a connection there it's really really hard it's all about long 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 lines that are so exposed that if one note is a little bit out of tune it's so obvious and then this I thought that was quite pop singery the way she did that Quite Mariah Carey. Quite a lot of flattening out on those notes. It's more of a modern approach. Uh, the the Maria Callas and the like didn't sing like that. They sang it much more classically, I suppose.
she's singing a little darker this time round, uh, just to vary the colour, because it's a second for us, same music. It's actually terrific sound. She's gorgeous, isn't she? And how does she sing with that much air? What, what I did learn later on in the opera world was that the public really they want something beautiful but the public also want something that they know if something comes along and you know it from somewhere you half recognize it even if it's from a movie or from an advertising campaign the fact that you recognize it gives you some comfort it helps you find your way through it and I can see from the response to this that Pretty much everybody in this audience in Berlin know this aria. Now they don't know it word for word, and they can't tell you what key it's in and when it was written, but they know it on their ear. I think Aida Garifulina has a wonderful ability to give people what they want. She sings beautifully. She looks gorgeous. She has a wonderful angelic stage presence you feel confident that she can sing this it's, she's not moving around she's statuesque she has a beautifully paced voice it just suits her elegance and the height in her voice and i love the way she also keeps it grounded she has amazing long breath She looks like she swims or does yoga every day because that is super fitness. So that's Aida, a new discovery for me now. She's signed to Decca and she sings a lot with pop singers and I think, yes, go, sing with pop singers. Get opera out there so that it's not just inside the opera house with dwindling numbers of people attending. We need to find young people who will connect with this music. Bellini wrote it nearly 200 years ago. So let's keep it alive. It's William saying goodbye from Bangkok. See you soon.